real name. Oh yeah, I mean like where's the challenge if it's not easy? What? That doesn't make any sense. Well, we're back here at the car again. There's a dog. Don't know whose he is, but there's a dog. Um, okay, uh, so if, uh, if you can't tell, it's a little warm today. It's uh, about mid-February in Texas, so that's how we roll. Um, and you can see that we've got the distributor in. We just uh, put it back in after finding top dead center and trying to get the wires because what's happening is it, it's, not, it's not continuing to run. It's the same problem we had last time. I got the battery charger on to make sure that stays cranked full of juice. Um, so right now we're just trying to figure out how to kind of make this all work. And the, the frustrating part, I guess, is that I'm kind of uh, hitting a wall in terms of knowledge. Like, I'm not sure uh, what to do at this point. So, um, it's, it's getting a little difficult at this point to try and, like, do some research. Because I've done so much research. I've got so many parts and tools out now. And it's a, it's a bit of a big project, but that's okay. We're going to... We're gonna see how it works, and uh, we're gonna make it happen. Uh, my goal today is to get the car uh, idling and running on its own, so we'll see if we can do that. All right, so I think this is where it was kind of like that. Yeah, I think, I don't know, maybe I have these, it smells like a lawnmower, by the way. Um, you know what, let's just, we'll redo all these. So as you can see, it's uh, still coming along. I'm gonna fill the bowl up. So, got plenty of juice. I'm gonna try moving this just a little bit to advance the timing. Make sure there's gas in there and give it a shot. Well, you saw it. 
What do you think? <sighs> I will say it is handy to have one of these little battery chargers uh, because when you're cranking on it for a lot, you are going to drain the battery even from a new battery. This one's from November for so three months ago. So having this uh, having this guy on here helps keep this uh, charged up because you know uh, it's got the go handles. I'm gonna try putting on a little more uh, or a little less timing. I don't know. I'm gonna try rotating the distributor a little bit more. Um, maybe that's why it's not working. All right, the distributor is rotated, so we'll give this a shot. See what I mean when I'm talking like 7,000 RPMs? Uh, I just, I don't know why it would be doing that. But, because yeah, like this thing is pushed forward, so it's not like the accelerator is being pulled back. Um, so I don't know guys, do you got any thoughts? I, I'm i getting to the point where I could use some help on uh, figuring out what to do here because I am a little bit of a loss. Okay, new plan. Um, let's try and get uh, some fuel up here. So I have a little uh, fuel pressure regulator um, and uh, I put on a uh, fuel pressure gauge in front of it because the fuel pressure coming from the pump should be between like 30 and 60 I think for uh, the fuel injectors that were on there and I need to step that down to like 3 to 6 for the carburetor so this little guy uh, should help with that on the back it's got uh, an I.O. for in, out, and this is return, so this will return to the uh, tank, and then this is in, out, so this goes out to the carburetor. So I need to just install him, uh, I don't know, maybe like here, if I can, and uh, that should maybe work. We'll see. I'm not much of a car guy, but uh, uh, Holly seems to be pretty good because they give you instructions, which uh, hardly ever come with anything. So, see what we can do. I guess I probably need to install this metal piece first. <sighs> Good job, Gary. All right, I want to try and put this here. Um, this is plastic, so I guess I can kind of just drill it in.
Oh my god, that worked? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Whatever, man. Just applying constant firm pressure, kind of poke through that uh, plastic. Don't want to turn it too hard because uh, it is just plastic holding it. But I think it's kind of working. I think that'll close. Oh yeah, I mean like where's the challenge if it's not easy? What? That doesn't make any sense. I guess that is on there. Okay, what I'm doing now is uh, removing the this uh, fuel uh, inlet for the carburetor, uh, and I'm going to hopefully replace it with a smaller one because uh, this is kind of hitting the distributor a little bit. Um. This little guy here, will he fit? That's cool. Fuel's leaking out all over those wires. <laughs> Let's see if I zipped him up right. <sighs> you know what? I have uh, I have tape for this, don't I? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't use the tape. I don't want it to get into the fuel. in there pretty snug. I mean, I could give it some more Ugas, but uh, I don't want to like break anything because it is aluminium. All right, so got that. Um, and uh, I also have the uh, fuel pressure or regulator hooked up over there. Looking pretty good. Hoping it doesn't hit the hood but looking pretty good, you know, for, uh, you know, a special person like me. That's in there pretty good. All right, now to, oh, you know what? I'm going to need more of these things because 
the outlet doesn't quite have one dang it also I'm not really 100% sure that's the right uh, thing to hold this distributor in place but uh, it is it's firm in there so uh, I guess it's working I don't even know this thing is pointing the right direction but you know we're moving moving forward people okay now before you even begin I know I know I'm under the car again believe me I know that uh, this time the front of the car and we're trying to connect uh, the fuel lines up so we can start using the tank for gasoline um, and both of my jacks are in the back so actually I might be able to jack this up a little bit more which would be just lovely but let's see what we got okay so for orientation sake fuel filter uh, oil pan oil plug uh, and camshaft uh, here's the, the fuel line that comes from the back uh, but I've got to figure out how to get plugged in um, I mean I feel like something should be there that's what what anybody know what that is uh, just a hole in the engine I, I guess I don't know oh fuel pump maybe that's where the fuel like the mechanical fuel pump would have gone okay um, I might also since I'm under here and ruining my life take off this smog pump because uh, you don't really need that what is leaking what It's not even on what I don't it didn't smell like gas I okay let me get back to you oh this is so so many wonderful memories I mean like look at like this thing is this all ick oh gross what Oh, yep. That's so ick. Uh, all right. Well, to those of you who, ooh, what, what is this? Is this a leaking uh, coolant line? Yeah. Ah. Uh, I mean, okay, but you don't need that to start the car. You wh why? Why are you leaking? Okay, you don't need that to start the car, so we will work on that later. <sighs> I think I've identified that as the return fuel line, because that chunk fell off and was filled with rust so that thing is an awful awful shape okay what I think what I'm gonna do is try and run new fuel line the whole way because this fuel line that's in here is just awful like it's all rusted and I think I'm gonna need to put new fresh fuel line in. I'm just gonna use rubber hose um, uh, cause that's easier to replace. It's easier to work with. I don't know if it's cheaper or not. It's probably more expensive. Um, but I think, I think that's what I need to do because I just, this old fuel line is just, it's, it's had its time and it's time for it to to go so I need to go back to the store 
and get some more fuel line. Um, I think the car is 17 feet long or something, so I don't know, 40 feet of line maybe? How much is that going to be? Like a million dollars? It's okay. Gotta have it. Alright, I'll get back to you. Well, uh, not under the car at least. So I'm trying to plumb in the new fuel line um, because all the old line is pretty much shot. So I don't really think that I can use that at all. Um, but uh, so I'm just trying to go straight from the gas tank to the front. Um, I do have an inline fuel filter um, that I replaced, if you remember from episode two or three. Um, so I think I need to go through that. Um, but like the, the actual fuel lines themselves are just corroded and full of gunk and debris. So I don't think we should be trying to use those at all. Um, so I went to the store, by the way, um, most of the people that work in uh, auto parts stores appear to uh, not be very aware of their industry um, because I don't consider myself a car person or a mechanic or anybody like that with any knowledge whatsoever but I do know that you should not use a vacuum hose in lieu of a uh, fuel hose because it'll melt um, but a person at uh, a unnamed parts store that may or may not be influenced by Irish people uh, did not know that so I informed him of that but anyway that's beside the point so what we're looking at here right now is uh, I've got a, um, a connector piece um, this is the return line uh, for the gas tank and this is the hose that I'm going to try and use for returning fuel. Um, I've connected it. This one, I mean, like it's uh, probably not a great connection, but like it's firmly on there. Like I can't easily pull it off. Um, but this guy here, if you remember, um, he goes into like a plastic hose. This is not a rubber hose, it's a plastic hose with like a rubber sheath around it. So uh, one of these guys will not fit in here. So I don't know, I'll try and find, I guess an adapter that I can maybe stick in here and then connect that to my, uh, my rubber hose that I have. Uh, Cause if I could do something like that, but have it stay um, this is where the fuel is coming out so it's going to be under the highest pressure um, I could then run that to the front of the car um, to the fuel pressure regulator but <laughs> it's uh, it, it's it's just it's not coming along as uh, uh, well as I would like and I don't um, like, I don't really know what to do at this point. Like, I'm spending a lot of time online researching, um, you know, uh, either going to forums or watching videos. Uh, but I'm really hitting that wall of lack of knowledge on, like, what parts to ask for or how to do adaptions and whatnot. And I don't think you guys want to just watch me sitting in front of a computer uh, Googling things, because that's boring. So... I I don't know like really what else to do at the moment I may get online and try and order some more parts uh, maybe I can find an adapter I really really don't want to drop the gas tank again to switch out this plastic line with the rubber line that is something that I really would really like to avoid so I am going to do what I can to avoid that because <laughs> that sucks um, anyway so kind of where we're at just to sum up is the car will start uh, the HEI distributor is in there and it's running so that's that's kind of that was kind of cool that was fun um, and it'll run for about 
if you if you're at the gas and working it um, it'll run for maybe 10 or 15 seconds before it kind of just dies um, I don't I don't know maybe I'm not maybe there's not enough exhaust coming maybe there's not enough fuel coming uh, maybe the spark is coming too late and it's uh, building up too much fuel in there I don't know there's uh, there's a lot of things it could be and I don't really know so like if you're watching people online that are doing it like vice grip garage or thunderhead 289 um like those people like they have just a vast wealth of knowledge of like what to do and so even though what they're doing may be hard they know enough that they can kind of figure out like where to go which is uh the portion of this i am lacking because i don't even like know enough to start to kind of get creative on how to uh fix things but that's okay because that gives me a chance to kind of learn and to grow and to get better but uh boy howdy it's uh it's tough it's a challenge so if you're going to be undertaking a job uh like working on your car um especially if you have an older car um just be aware of that but as you can see like the the lines here just they're not good they're not gonna they're not gonna make it these these connections are okay i mean it'd be nice to just use that could i just use that okay because i think i can put uh, does that have maybe this is Maybe that's the outline. Okay, well anyway. Maybe if I use this line, I could... I don't know. I Like... Yeah. Yeah. Would, would one of these guys fit over that? Okay. Okay, so stick with me here. I plug this into that. Yeah, yeah. I have a little clamp thing, so that will should hold that. I can cut this line, slide one of these guys on top of it, and then I don't have to worry about that... Uh, finding an adapter or something to connect it that may work do I have enough good line here that I could use that I mean it's like it's it's fine like, it's fine um, so yeah let me try that and see what happens because I know it's bad up by like where the fuel fill track is um but if i can get into it earlier like if i could get into it like here maybe that would work okay under the car again you guys might recognize our little fuel uh, fill track friend uh so why are you leaking ick why is that happening okay well there's obviously a chemical reaction uh, melting some of the lines so or could that just be something that was in the lines because like it's thick like you guys got the idea of what that is aside like because like it's just like a melted line i don't know all right well you know that's fine uh okay so here's where it turns back into metal which is just just corroded just disgusting! Oh. 
So maybe Well, what What's under here? It's it's under here. Is this Not again. Oh. It's like a nightmare that never ends. Okay. Fine. All right. Okay. Oh. Well, there's some gas, which is uh I guess still flammable. All right. So what if we Okay, so let's just put some rubber hose on here and run that forward and we can skip all the crap. Maybe. She's a bit scaly. Uh, I like all of it. All right, well. Um, don't skip it. All right, so what do we got up here? We got the fuel filter. Um, and I've got the new fuel line. Um, I don't know if I can get it over this little, it's got like a little lip here. I'm gonna try and get this line over this lip and then put a clamp here. But if not, just put a clamp down here. Um, I mean, it's only like 40 to 60 pounds of PSI. I mean, how much can that, you know, blow off? And just so you guys don't think I'm like a total idiot, uh, this is SAE. 30 R7 fuel line, PVC EEC, 3 eighths of an inch, 50 PSI. So, I don't think this is melting. It shouldn't be. I'm not using, I mean, I'm just putting gas in there. And that's fuel, right? This was the uh, line that went into the fuel filter, and it's just got like this... It's like a jelly or something uh, on it. I I don't know. You guys ever see this or experience? I mean, the inside of it is look looks clean. I don't know. Uh, not something I was anticipating seeing today but there it is all right so where i am now is back wheel i got the this is i believe the return hose so i kind of just uh ran it along uh the inside and then there's like this little space here between the frame and uh, this uh, other thing that's rusting out. And I just shoved it in there. And can I run both of them just all the way to the front doing that? I don't know. Maybe. Give that a shot. All right, everyone. I think that's as far as we're going to get today. Um, I have uh, successfully gotten the flux capacitor nope the fuel pressure regulator on i got another one of these this guy will be going to the carburetor um one thing that i thought was pretty smart was i uh labeled the uh, ends of the hoses so blue is my return hose on the other end is blue and then red is my uh, from the tank hose so i can try and keep those straight i did try and learn from my mistake uh, earlier so this project, uh, it's come along pretty well, actually. Now, this project is a mess. Um, I think this is in right. I think I've got the distributor in, and I, it's, it's obviously working because it's firing off. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with this guy because he'll run for five or 10 seconds and then crap out. So, still working on that. Um, 
it's a work in progress but if we're getting pretty close oh by the way if you ever are driving a 1984 Ford LTD Crown Victoria and you need to locate the uh, the fuel uh, uh, thing uh, that turns the, the fuel pressure on man the fuel pump on this little green switch right here inside of this box does that so if you just disconnect this guy uh, your fuel pump won't run which uh, you know I guess uh, you can't steal the car if you don't do that. Um, and do to do to do, do. So you see, I got uh, blue on this hose, and there's red on the end of that hose. So I know which two hoses these are. Um, I've got uh, this kind of in here. It's a little bit tucked away. Uh, I've got to do more with that, and uh, probably uh, zip ties or something. I've got to figure out what to do there. That's going to be kind of an issue. Um, if I can, that will be just wonderful. And that will finish up the fuel issues. And then I can pop the tires back on and be done with that. Because uh, the only thing we're kind of missing here, I think... Well, you know what? Now that I say that, there's four things you need for an engine to run. You need fuel which we're getting close to completing. You need spark, which I believe we have completed, and I believe it's timed right, or good enough to run at least. Um, I even put a little vacuum line on it. Uh, you need compression, which I believe we have, and you actually need a fourth thing, exhaust. That may be causing a problem. I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some research on that, because I mean, the, uh, the headers, you know, they're, uh, they're they're good i mean that's solid as it can be i don't think that would cause a problem but maybe um so like here's the kind of uh fuel line uh and pretty much anything under this car uh is kind of like this just horrendously horrendously corroded uh soup to nuts top to bottom um so i'm going to be replacing this with a fresh rubber line um, trying to um, and see how it goes but I am unfortunately out of time this week uh, so we're moving forward with things uh, uh, the fuel pressure regulators in which is just great um, we still have gotten some of the line plumbed in we'll need to plumb in a little bit more and then kind of see where that takes us for uh, for the next part but anyway thank you guys for watching so much i appreciate it uh, if you have any uh, ideas or tips please leave them down below in the comments and uh, until next time see you around